Okay, so in the last video, we left off at psi, capital omega times a, is equal to zeta, a minus 1. So basically our strategy was to continually add in these capital omegas to unstick the function and get all of our zetas. So when we started out with psi function, uh, this got stuck at zeta naught. Because you can imagine, if we want to get an infinite nesting of epsilons, which is defined as zeta naught, we have to plug in an infinite nesting, and this is prohibited. So in order to get past this, we had to put in our first uh, capital omega here, and then we have access to zeta naught, and then we can move on to bigger and bigger ordinals. But then we run into the same problem with an infinite nesting of epsilons again. So this time we get stuck at zeta 1. So then we plug in another capital omega, which is just equal to capital omega times 2. And this is also equal to zeta 1. So in this fashion, we could continually just uh, add in our capital omegas and get larger and larger zeta numbers. So the question is, does this go on forever? Can we just keep on adding and getting bigger and bigger ordinals? Well, the answer is no. We run into um, a similar problem as we did with the epsilons, but this time it happens with the zetas. So to make this more clear, I'll plug in some uh, larger values. So um, we're allowed to plug in infinite ordinals into here as well. So we can have something like psi, capital omega, times small omega. And then we can get zeta, omega. And uh, I want to make a note here. The reason why we don't put a little minus 1 here is because this is an infinity. So infinity minus 1 is still just going to be infinity. Moving on, we can do psi, capital omega, epsilon naught. This equals zeta, epsilon naught. We could even plug in psi, capital omega, zeta naught, and get zeta, zeta naught. So with this, we can basically construct any kind of zeta. But as we go on, you can see a, a problem happening, basically. We can create arbitrary um, nestings of zetas. But what if we wanted to create something like eta naught, which is defined as an infinite nesting of zetas? Well, here, in order to get an infinite nesting, we would have to plug in an infinite nesting of zetas here. So once again, we can never quite get there. This means that this function here gets stuck at eta naught. So now instead of adding in a capital omega, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the current uh, capital omega with another capital omega. So we get psi capital omega times capital omega is still just equal to eta naught because this function got stuck here. And this truncates to psi capital omega squared. And then we can continue on in this fashion, basically. We can go uh, psi capital omega squared plus 1 will be the first epsilon number after eta naught. We can say in general that psi capital omega squared plus a is equal to the eighth epsilon number after eta naught. And we could even plug in uh, a capital omega here. We can add one in and get to the first zeta number after eta naught. So that's also allowed. And then eventually we get to something like this, where we have psi capital omega squared plus capital omega squared, and we have an infinite nesting of zetas, once again, with eta naught plus 1 at the bottom, which is defined as uh, eta 1. And this, of course, truncates to psi capital omega squared times 2. And we could even say in general that psi capital omega squared times a is equal to eta a minus 1. So now uh, we can think of this kind of as an eta building function. Just as uh, capital omega times a was a zeta building function, and just a plain old psi of a was an uh, epsilon building function, um, each time we use a different method basically. So we have just a number here is the epsilon building function. We have a capital omega times a number is a zeta building function. Then down here we have a capital omega squared times an a. We can think of this as an eta building function. This is basically just a way of thinking about it that makes it a little bit easier uh, to construct the ordinals. So now we ask the question basically. Uh, just as the limit of this basically was the supremum of all the epsilons, which is zeta, 
this here, um, the function got stuck. It ended up being the supremum of all the zetas, which is uh, eta. What's the supremum of the etas now? This is going to be the next time where this function gets stuck and we have to plug in another capital uh, omega here. Well, we don't actually have a name for this, but it's uh, an infinite nesting of etas. So if we think of eta in uh, Veblen notation as phi 3 of 0, uh, the supremum of this is going to be uh, the next Veblen function, so phi 4 of 0. So we can write that in or whatever. We can say this function gets stuck at capital omega squared, and this time we can plug in another uh, capital omega to get past this, but this is going to equal phi 4 of 0, and this truncates to psi capital omega cubed. And now, what we can say in general, using the exponent this time, whatever, let's replace the exponent with a variable, we can say phi capital omega a is equal to phi a plus 1 of 0. So now we can think of the a in this exponent here as a building Ve a Veblen function. So it's like a two-argument Veblen function builder. So once again, as we did before, we think to ourselves, if this, if this is a, a Veblen function builder, what is the supremum of the two-argument Veblen functions? Well, basically, it's an infinite nesting of Veblen functions. And what do we call that? Gamma naught. So this function gets stuck at gamma naught. And uh, to get unstuck again, we have to just plug in uh, capital omega, this time in the exponent. So we can do psi capital omega to the power of capital omega and get gamma naught. And uh, to get past this, whatever, I'm going to leave that for the next video. So we'll see you then.